So, thank you. I'm here to talk about something that a lot of people love more than anything else. Money. And you know what these people love even more than money? That's more money. <laughs> and that's a problem for open source companies, because they're not keep competing at equal terms. So they are used to, to earn less. And I'm here to show that that doesn't have to be the case. So I'm an open source uh, developer, but I'm also an entrepreneur. And I'm uniquely positioned that I've been able to combine both those as aspects. So I believe that open source is a really the best way to find good developers and, and create a better code, because you get it more tested. It has lots of advantages. The problem with open source, it's really, really hard to create a co uh, company who produce open source software and at the same time competes with closed source companies. Because you don't get enough money to pay developers. You need basically 10 support engineers to pay a developer, and that doesn't scale. Uh, when you see open source like a philosophy and a development model, then a way to earn money. There's no guarantee that you will earn money, and lots of companies uh, just do support uh, on the side and then do very little de development. And there are very few companies who have done uh, IPO as an open source company. My company, MySQL, we didn't do an IPO, we, did, we got sold, but uh, that still was a good deal. But it's a hard thing to do that. This is probably the most important slide for those who are working with open source. At service company, it's a really good way to make money. You can grow, uh, but only to some stage. But when you go to an investor and try to get money, they will say that uh, uh, your valuation is only two times your revenue. But if you would be a software company, uh, selling licenses, or have any method where a part of your customers would have to pay, then your valuation is 10 times. Plus, if you have lots of users, there's some bonus for that. And uh, this was the reason why MySQL was sold, was sold to Sun for $1 billion, because we actually had to find a way to get people to pay for open source. Why should anybody go open source? I mean, take the commercial product, closed source, open core, or go open, open source. Just because you want to do things better and compete with the uh, big guys. MySQL could never have been a success uh, if we wouldn't have been open source and leverage the community, the user bases, and the easy way to attract developers. There is a lot of reason why people trust open source software. And, because, and most, uh, the most important one for, probably for a company is that there's no lock-in. You know that the software will not go away independent if the company decides to do something else, or they go out of business, or they don't develop the product in the way that you need. You are still in control. You can hire other people, you can go to another company. And also very, very little risk for, for trap doors or, or having the vendor go getting access to things that they shouldn't. For developers, it's also much better to use open source software because you can fix anything. Uh, personally, I always use open source if I can because uh, uh, I often come to bugs that for my things, and I can go and fix those. I still have lots of freedoms that is really necessary for my work. I don't have personally any problem paying things, but I wanted the freedom to be in charge of my own destiny. There's lots of uh, licenses in, in open source. There are some hundred, more than 100 licenses. And one of the mistakes companies do when they go out and try to create a new product think that, oh, the licenses are not good enough, let's do something different. And then they try to slightly tweak this. The problem is that, that most of your discussion with customers will be then about your special license. You shouldn't do this. These licenses are good enough, you should use one of those. And those are basically the only thing that you need to know. And this is uh, totally free, anybody can do anything with your code, and there's then some restrictions what people can do with your code. So with uh, open source, there's only a certain amount of business models that exist for actually making money with open source. And um, uh, open core model is probably the one that 
uh, most companies are using, where you have uh, some part of your uh, code open source and then other parts closed source. Closed source. I have a slide for all, all of those, so I don't will not go into those. The only thing I will want to mention is uh, the service model, so, where it's a good way to grow, good way to create a small company, but you can never compete with the big guys. But you don't always have to. What I wanted to do with MySQL originally was to define a business model who, where I can work full time on the code, only do that, and not have to do consulting on the side to be able to support my open source uh, desires. And there's lots of people who want to do that, but then you need to do something else. So open core is probably the most uh, used one. Basically what uh, Oracle is doing with MySQL, they have the normal open source version, but if you want to have the, all the features, you have to pay and there they are, the features are closed source. The problem with open core, which, I, which is the reason I hate open core, is that it basically takes all away all the freedoms that I had described on the previous slide. If something goes wrong, you can't fix it. Uh, you have, if, the, if Oracle goes out of business, you can't use MySQL anymore. There will be no new versions of the version that you need. So you have, you have total lock-in. There's nothing you can do. So open core is really, really bad if you need of any of the open core features. But still, if that's the only way that you can do money, then you should do that. I mean, I'm not standing away from entrepreneur wanted to succeed. But if you're looking at things from, uh, from open source uh, aspect and want to have uh, all the freedoms and all the benefits, then you need to do something else than open core. <sighs> Some people have done donations and crowd crowdfunding. The problem with that is that it's very good to bootstrap uh, a product or a game. You may get one version done. But if you want to do, like me, Start, I started with MySQL in 1981, still working on the code, still doing development. The problem with uh, donations and crowdfunding is that you maybe get money for the first version, but who will pay for the next version, the next version? And when you do this for 30 years, you will don't, this doesn't work. Very good way to bootstrap the first version, so you don't have to go to investors, because investors want to take part of your company. I mean, they're good investors like me, but not everybody. <laughs> I will tell them that first, prove your business, and when you have proven it, then come to me, and then I will give you more money than you can spend. So dual licensing, this is what, what we used with MySQL. We were the second pro, pro, uh, program who used uh, dual licensing, and we were the first one who, who found out how to do it with GPL. So dual license means that you had a code in two different versions. One is open source, but it's still one of the later open source versions that I had in the previous slide with some restrictions. So with GPL, the restriction is that if you use GPL, all your code has to be GPL. So that means that if a commercial entity like Adobe wants to use uh, my, their product with MySQL, they can't because they don't want to make Adobe uh, open source. So they come to us and said, can we really like MySQL, can we get the same code and another license. We said, yes, we own the code, here's it, and then you pay normal license fees. And that was what enab enabled us to earn money on MySQL. Uh, we got about 70% of our income on licensing. And that's why we were, were worth $1 billion with a $70 million or euros, I don't remember, uh, revenue. Now, 70 million times times 10, that's 700 million, and we had a 10, 20, 50 million users, that created a billion. So AGPL also is another way to do it. And AGPL says that, uh, um, that if you combine that, uh, the code with your code on the internet so somebody can access the end product, then you have to do, use, uh, give all your code available. So people are also paying to get rid of that. So GPL and LGPL works really good for infrastructure products, something people want to combine. But if you do, a, for example, a, a player or a picture program or something else, nobody wants to combine that with anything else. So this license doesn't work with, it, with all of those. And uh, that's why David Axmark and me, and me, David Axmark is the second founder of MySQL. We, we've uh, thought that we need something else. 
and we created this a long time ago, but I wanted started to talk about this publicly uh, after I, I become part of Open Ocean, because there were lots of companies coming to me with business models where dualizing didn't work, they were open source, and I want to give them an, another alternative to force small portions of your, their user base to pay, so I could actually invest into them. I wanted to help them. So that's also why I have these talks of if you have entrepreneurs here who are thinking about how to conquer the world in a different way, this is one way to do that. So first, this is not an open source license. And there is a lot of companies who are having open core programs that they claim this is open source, when in reality it isn't because you need these closed source uh, parts. But the, the nice thing is that the source is available from the start. There's in the source code, it says that after three years or something like close to that, the source code will be an open source license. And uh, usually it has to be GPL. Uh, why this is better than open core is all the limitations that I said that, why I personally never would you want to use a closed source product, that I'm depending on, on one vendor, uh, I don't have a choice uh, of who fixed bugs or anything else, of, or I had to end using a product if the end vendor goes away. The business source license doesn't have, those, have these problems. Yes, for some, for the limitations that it, uh, puts on you, you have to pay for some, some, some parts. Yes, I forgot to say that, that a part of the business source license says that, that you can freely do, use the code in any way you want, but under these conditions you have to pay. So there's a way to get a small part of your user base to pay, and that kind of is the trick to do it. So the nice things for... for for users is that you have lots of reason to trust a business source license vendor because uh, there, you know that there is no lock vendor lock-in, uh, you have all the source code, and the only caveat is that for some cases, if you earn a lot of money, then you actually have to give something back. And I, I believe that uh, companies are using the business source license are forced to do, uh, have a good behavior against their customers because uh, af after three years, they can use you for free. So what you have to do is that you have to do new releases with new features so you can get, basically get a new timeline because the timeline starts for each release. So, and you have to ensure that everybody is happy with the new, new release so they don't just continue using the old release without paying. So the recommendation I usually say is that three to four years, you shouldn't try to force everybody to pay. In my school, uh, over the time, we, we concluded that about one in a thousand paid a license for my school. And if you have millions of users, actually one in a thousand is not a bad deal. So you should target the, the part that forces people to pay to something that you get a big spread, but those actually who earn a lot of money and really are using your product, they have to pay. And I think that's a fair thing to do. So this is my way to try to find a compromise between the closed source world uh, where you have a possibility to earn a lot of money and the free world where you want to give a lot of users a lot of things for free which will force a small part to pay so you can do your job and continue doing what you love for the rest of your life. There have also been lots of confusions because when I introduced this in 2013, people said that, oh, no, it wants to do MariaDB um, as a business source and close it down. That's not the intention. This is just to help entrepreneurs who believe in open source but can't afford to be fully open source but still want to f follow the philosophy to do that. And they will be open source with a slight time delay. I think that's a good compromise. So there's a couple of projects that is using it. There are lots of people uh, who are contacting me and asking, can you give me details? And everybody wanted to see that, hey, has somebody else done it before? So that's one of the reasons I'm really happy that the MaxScale, MaxScale proxy, which is part of the, the products we have in uh, MariaDB Corporation, is BSL. So we're actually showing people that you can earn money this way. And after we change license, the, the, the discussions about paying for MaxScale 
was is totally different. Now we are talking about deals that is up to hundred thousands, which when before we were talking about a couple of ties, thousand, or we just bundled it with something else. So this really, really works. So kind of the uh, end slides, MySQL could never have been successful if we wouldn't have sold licenses. It's very, very hard to get companies to pay when they don't have to. When I started with MySQL, open source was new, people were, or companies were used to pay for software. So when they started to use us, um, they said, okay, we have to pay them. They didn't understand that they actually could use it for free. Subscriptions, good business, but they're hard to sell. And in the end, license is free money so that you just get, you don't have to do anything else to get it. And you need that to be able to convince investors that your company is somewhere, something where we should put our money. And thank you. <laughs>